So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Mars in the 7th house of Navamsha video. As in what happens when Mars is in the 7th house of your Dina Navamsha chart, which is one of the most important charts in Vedic astrology, which kind of shows the strength of your planets, second half of your life, your married life, your marriage. It also shows um, the inner engineering of your birth planets because Navamsha chart is pretty much working 24-7. But really, you start bringing out what the planets are in Navamsha later in life. When you mature, when you mature enough that, oh, this is who I am. Oh, I need to bring this out in the world. That's what Navamsha chart is. And as always, if you do not know, if you have Mars in Navamsha chart, what your planet replacements are in the birth or Navamsha or any other divisional chart, check out the links here. Check out my full logical report um, under the shop section at this link. And uh, from option five and beyond, you'll find that. Also link to my Academy, Magavadik Astrology Academy, where um, you can join that school anytime you know you want. And uh, currently I'm teaching Dashas there. So you can catch up maybe in six months, two months, one week, depending upon how quick you go. It's just, you know, 46, 47 lessons there. Um, and also I have a new reading called the Samsa Chart Reading. That's a unique reading. It's not just to do with career. Because the Samsha is the um, obligation to society. It's truly the personality. I've seen this with the Samsha. People behave like they're the Samsha more than even the birth chart. Because what are we doing? What am I doing right now with you? I'm, I'm, I'm here talking to you, being Kapil Raj, being this cares channel person. I go out on the street. I buy a coffee. I'm again being something out in the world because how much time do we spend inside the home very little nowadays we're dealing with the professional people if i'm home i'm dealing with you guys i'm dealing with people that i'm doing the reading for i'm i am presenting who i am as a person so that's that now let's talk about um the navamcha chart of mars so one thing you guys must be wondering oh my god i'm a monglik no no because if you're going to apply the Manglik concept in divisional charts, then you're going to be running into circles because you'll have seventh, uh, Mars in the 7th house in your D60 chart, Sasti Amsha, Navamsha, Dwadas Amsha. I mean, you're going to just, you're going to be like, okay, I'm a Manglik here, I'm not a Manglik here, what's going on? No, just use the birth chart for that. What Mars in the 7th house does is this, okay? Mars natural kark abastha, natural tattva is tamasic, it's fiery, and it's a malefic. And to be honest with you, in marriage, you need that tattva. You need to be able to deal with the struggles of the world with your partner. Because it's like a general who's there. A general's job is to kind of like um, manufacture a plan for you to execute. Because see, when we're reading a chart, people don't realize this most basic concept, which is literally in the first two or three chapters, two chapters of BPHS. Sun is the king, moon is the queen, Mars is a general, Rahu, Ketu are the army, Saturn is a servant, Jupiter, Venus are advisors. So remember, when you're judging even this Mars in Navamsha, you always want to look at sun. Only when the king gives the order to the general, that's when general will execute its plan. People don't realize this. This is why you can't do, oh, I've got Mars in the seventh house, so I'm screwed. I've got Saturn in the first house, I'm screwed. No, you got to see what order is Saturn is given. Saturn is the one who sweeps the floor, cleans the toilet, or cooks. He's the servant. Well, what order is servant getting from the king? So look at, if you want to judge this, look at sun in any divisional chart. Start from that point. He's the king. He's giving orders. He's the mighty one. And not even your chara atmakarka. I'm just talking about sun as being the king. Sun will give the order to Mars. Mars is not going to listen to Brahaspati or Shukra, they're just the ministers. If a minister came and told Mars, hey, go to war. We need to win this land. Mars would be like, are you on crack? 
where's the document? Where's the official document from the king that I'm supposed to go to war? Oh, there's no document? Don't waste my time. Because unless the king tells me, I will do this. So if a king, if son is saying, destroy this person's marriage, that's the order I'm giving you. He's like, I will do my best to do it. See where I'm getting this? It's a very, very deep thing I'm telling you that I'm actually now starting to t teach in my lessons as well. I'm going to be going deep into nakshatra with this concept as well in my academy. Um, so sun gives that order. Mars will also listen to the queen. So king says, destroy this person's marriage. Okay, I'll do that. Queen says, once you have destroyed this person's marriage, bring them a very beautiful person and make them a great cook, but still give them the same personality. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, I'll do that. But let me follow the orders of the king first. So if Mars is going on war, the queen will say, listen, once you have conquered this land, I want these particular flowers. I want these particular, you know, um, herbs from this land. Can you bring it? Of course, my queen. Start looking at every chart this way. And there are other concepts too. It's not just this, but this is the start of it. So if you're going to look at Saturn in the seventh house of Nabamsha, okay, well, what is Saturn doing? It's in a certain sign. It's even in a certain nakshatra, you know, as in certain softwares, you can see nakshatras, um, although it doesn't print out on the report. But what is that Saturn doing? Well, first look at the sun. Sun is the king. And the servant is going to follow in the footsteps of the king. And Rahu Ketu are the one who are working under Mars. What will Rahu Ketu will do in Navamsha? Is going to be given the order by the general to the army because Ketu is the conquered army. Rahu is the charging army. So this is the basic first concept. Now Mars in the seventh house will always, any planet in the seventh or first axis will affect the native and the partner. So whenever I see this, first of all, if we're just looking at Mars, definitely shows one needs fire and passion in marriage. But one also controls. One wants to control. It's their dharma to control. You see, dharma. It's one's dharma to control. And it's not just the one's dharma. It's their spouse's dharma to do the same thing. Why? Because seventh house is the mirror of the first house. So if something is in the seventh house, what is it doing? It's going to aspect the lagna, the ascendant. If Mars was in the ascendant, what does it do? It aspects the seventh house. Same, same kind of game is being played in the first seventh axis. So what happens is you try to control your marriage. Your spouse tries to control the marriage. And then what happens is Mars's energy is to bring a battleground. A competitive ground so one brings a competitive ground into their marriage marriage becomes this playground of sports competitive sports or war that's the first thing that Mars does and Mars brings about tremendous amount of passion like this person and their native will definitely be passionate like I want passion I want that sexual you know throwdown with the person now, how much and how well it'll do, well, that order will come from Venus. Because when it comes to the actual passion part, then you look at Venus. Is Venus the, the engine, the CPU of the seventh house and the Atma Karka of Navamsha giving that order? Okay, Mars will do that. Or, or, or as not, we'll do that. We'll give either high results or low results. And anytime I see Mars in the seventh house of Navamsha, most definitely tells me that this particular person um, is going to be dealing with a lot of strategic maneuvers in marriage and their partners will be put in pulling their own strategic maneuvers in the marriage. Mars in the seventh house can actually give very, very early marriage. If other combinations are right in the birth chart, let's say, you, for example, you have Moon, Venus in the seventh house in the birth chart. Mars is sitting in the seventh house. Literally, a person can get married between the ages of 17 and 21. It's these little tricks when you see 
and then if you see that Charadasha is running and Dharakarka is right on the Lagna or the seventh house of that axis of the Charadasha, hey, did you get married or came close to marriage? Perhaps somebody lived in an apartment with their girlfriend for two years. It's a marriage. Just because you didn't go around the fire, it's still a marriage. You were living under the same roof. Did you have sexual relationships with them? Well, it's a marriage under that roof. So that, that's what happens. Then one thing you will see, Mars in the seventh house, both the native and their spouse wants freedom. You restrict either the native or the spouse. Clashes happen. Like, why are you asking me that I'm going here? Why are you asking me I'm doing this? Why are you asking me who am I talking to? Why are you asking me who am I supposed to be friends with? It becomes that, that, that challenging battle there. And one wants freedom. So best thing to do with Mars in the seventh, let the spouse go free. And once you that, once you do that, they will, what are they going to do? They're going to do their mirror effect. This person just give me freedom. Fine. I'll give you freedom too. But remember that that particular order of that mutual respect is going to be given through sun. Sun will, sun in Navamsha will give the order. Then what we see is that especially if Mars is in the seventh house, the person will not like dealing with their colleagues. They get into battles with their colleagues. They want to be in the position where they're left alone in, or in charge. Like this person wants to be in a position where, they, where the colleagues are under them, so they will not question them. Otherwise, the frustration comes in. And you got to understand one thing about Mars. Mars in the seventh house, in the birth or Navamsha, person does not want to negotiate. Marriage is what? Companionship, negotiations, sacrifice, duty, commitment. And this is where you need Saturn, where people run away from, oh my God, I got Saturn in the seventh house. Lord have mercy on me. Well, you really want to think about Mars as a planet that should give you those questions. Lord have mercy on me because it's going to be, it's going to be like you are sitting in your table, you know, having a nice cigar and suddenly you're put into a battlefield or you're put into a professional sports like cricket. And the guy is about to just bowl and you have never hit a bat before and you got to do it. Otherwise, if the ball hits you, it can break your leg. It's coming so fast. So Mars has to learn, which is very hard. Pretty much it's impossible with Mars in the seventh for teach him how to negotiate and how to compromise. Mars doesn't want to compromise. General does not compromise. He says, you go do it and die while doing it. Because Mars himself will go and die on the field, then go back home as a loser. That's the mentality of Mars. But where Mars becomes neutral, because Mars is neutral to Venus, it's domain of the seventh house. So Mars says, look, if I get my sexual satisfaction, my romance, my love, my lust satisfied, fine, what do you want? That's the thing. What do you want? Fine, you gave me everything that I just needed and wanted. You fulfilled my sexual fantasy. I just came from battle and you just relaxed me. All right, what can I do for you? But if you don't do any of that, whether you or your partner, then it becomes like, okay, why should I do this? Why do I do that? Mars constantly needs that physical interaction in order for things to be negotiated with Mars in the seventh house of Navamsha, regardless of the sign. Now, one thing you want to see, very simple, not the zodiac sign, but the sex of the zodiac sign. Is it male or female? If Mars is in the masculine sign, boy, you're talking about a very sturdy, very non-negotiable Mars. If Mars is in the feminine sign, 
it'll be much more receptive to a little bit of negotiation and sharing of passion and compromise. But what Mars does in the seventh house, it establishes the home. One has the ability to attain land, real estate, with Mars in the seventh in the Vamsha, through marriage. One kind of conquers their, you know, um, their battle of the home. Meaning like, okay, do I need to establish a home? Okay, I've got a home. I've got all these material things in there. Why? Because Mars is Bhumi Karka. Everything is on land is physical. It's real. It's not some meditation and spiritual uh, delusion, illusion, whatever you want to call it. Mars represents the physical aspect. Mars cannot think like, oh, I'm going to shoot you with my spiritual gun. Mars will be dead. Mars like, I need that physical gun where I can shoot. The bullet goes in, my enemy dies. So it's physical things. Mars gives status in the seventh house. Mars is capable of giving status in the seventh house to the person. Because why? Seventh house is what? Bhavat Bhavam of the tenth house. You got, you got to apply the same principle of the birth into the Nabamsha. Now, of course, the aspect in conjunction will clearly show how Mars is going to be reacting. Is he irritated with certain aspect or conjunction? Or is he flowing with a certain aspect of con or conjunction? Now, one thing I will also say, like if Jupiter is in the seventh house with Mars, yeah, that, that's, um, that's pretty much a military ground you're talking about to deal in marriage. But if Mars comes with the moon or Venus, you know, then it becomes a much more passionate relationship. Mercury will completely show arguments on very little things. Why? First of all, Mars is not negotiating. It's sitting with its enemy Mercury. Because one starts analyzing and when they analyze, they get irritated. When they get irritated, they'll get angry. And it's not just you. Both you and your spouse will do the same thing because it's that one seven axis. So this is what Mars does in Navamsha. And this is just a very small tidbit of it. Rest of it, we have to see the chart. We have to see how the Mars is reacting from the birth to Navamsha. Okay. So anyway, guys, if you are new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you want to know where your Mars is placed, all your astrological details, check out the links here. And check out my academy, Magavetika Astrology Academy. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.